Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we're gonna start with uh, very interesting news, funny news in fact, uh, I would say some drama in bodybuilding world and it is basically Hari Chopin uh, who fired his uh, manager, actually managers, two brothers uh, and now they are saying, actually one of them is saying that Hadi used to use Sintel. <laughs> so it is a funny situation. Basically, it all started a couple of days ago when Hari Japan fired these two guys. This situation was partly covered by a couple of major bodybuilding outlets like Nick Strike and Power before this Sintel claim. Then Generation Iron started talking about Sintel and buys and tries, as you can see on Instagram, pretty much summed everything up uh, properly here. So as you can see, it says. Hadi Chopin and his manager Mahti Parsafar have recently parted ways. Shortly after that, Mahti received a takedown notices for his YouTube channel, previously rebranded for Hadi. It is also worth mentioning that Hadi was called Mr. Sintel and Sintel People's Champion by Hadi Parsafar, Mahti's brother. Generation Iron went a little bit more in depth about this whole thing. They made an article where they posted all the stories and the posts of Parsaf Mahti where he was talking about Hari and Sintel use. They translated a couple of interesting statements by the brothers, like this one. Hari Parsafar says, I don't want to waste time with Mr. Sintel and homeless. He has to come to the court and answer questions. He wants to get YouTube channel, but uh, you bury this wish. So, I'm not even sure what is happening here, it looks like Hadi doesn't want to promote whatever the brothers are promoting and they were using his image because they were managing him, now it's no longer the case and Hadi wants them to stop doing that, well, that's at least how it seems I don't know the full story, there is probably more to it that pretty much sums it up guys, I don't wanna go too deep into who did what, who said what, what I find curious and very interesting here is that Hadi's former champion said that Hadi was in fact using Sintel. What a surprise, I would never guess this, nobody expected to hear it, ha ha, of course we all pretty much knew, I mean there are some people who, who don't want to believe in this, but most pros actually use Sintel, believe it or not, in one body part or the other, when these professional bodybuilders who do this at the highest, absolutely highest level, when they make a lot of money from this, and they do have a lagging body part, they do whatever they can to make it better. And if the only way to do that is to put some inside enhancement oil in your delts, in your arms, stuff like that, they do it. And Hari obviously did that with his delts in particular and his arms for sure. We saw that so many times by now, but does it really matter? No, not really. I mean, so many of them are doing that. It's all about how it looks. And if you look fine with it, if it's not too obvious, you're good. And uh, Hadi... Yeah, he's like more on the a little bit more obvious side. You can kind of see it. You can, you can guess, you can assume that he's doing it. It's not clear. It's not like completely apparent to the eye. But I'm sure the judges can notice it. And it seems like they don't mind. Since he's doing so well. You might argue that he didn't win the Mr. Olympia because of that. But I don't think that's the case. In IFBB in Europe, the rules are more strict. And if the judges would notice Sintel, they would definitely mark him down. But in IBB Pro League, at the Mr. Olympia level, if it all flows well, if his physique looks good, and Hadi's physique looks phenomenal, look at his physique, it is, it is absolutely outstanding, I mean, this is one of the best physiques in the world right now, arguably the best physique in the world, it doesn't matter, they are all doing it, some are doing it more than the others, but they are all pretty much doing a little bit of it, most of them at least, and as long as it looks good, as long as their physiques look impressive, like this, who cares? And still, this is just a rumor, I mean, we don't even know for sure because the guy said it, it's not like we saw a video or a video of Hadi admitting it, it's just his manager saying stuff. But I mean, let's be real, at this point it's pretty clear that he is using it. And now the question is, does it matter? Will this affect Hadi? Will this affect his reputation or his placements or anything? I don't think it will and I don't think it should. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Before we move on guys, I just wanna show you the Vintage Blast uh, pre-workout by the Old School Lab. So guys, if you want a really good pre-workout with really good high quality ingredients, but not too many stimulants, it has stimulants, just enough to get you amped, 
but it's more like pump, uh, focus, uh, endurance type of pre-workout. And I'm talking about using only one scoop, not one and a half, not two. I never tried the one and a half. I only used one scoop and I used a couple of times during the week and it helps. It helps a lot. And it's not, again, it's not filled up with stimulants. So it's not gonna like burn you out completely if you use it too much. You can use this one a lot. I use it the entire off season. It is a really good one and it tastes amazing. You have a bunch of flavors. You can choose your own. So if you guys want to support my channel, you can try this product out. Uh, you can uh, use the link in the description of this video and use the code EVEN for a 12% discount. Alright, the next story is about Brandon Curry, who made a video explaining to all of his fans that uh, he is in fact not retiring. No, it's not true. He is not skipping this year's Olympia and he is not 200 pounds. So what happened here is another bodybuilding news YouTube channel made this story or should I say made up this story about Brandon Curry uh, retiring, uh, weighing 205 pounds and uh, not doing the Olympia this year and apparently it's not true. So basically uh, in this video I'm going to show you in a second, it's a, it's a lengthy video, I'm going to show you just a couple of interesting parts uh, where Brandon and his wife address these rumors. Uh, they have been asked by multiple fans if Brandon is uh, retiring, uh, how much he's weighing and stuff like that. But as you can see, obviously Brandon is freaking huge right now. He hasn't been very active on social media because he's uh, traveling uh, with his kids. I think they are playing football. He's helping them. Uh, he filmed this video with a coach, I think, of his children. Uh, so he was a little bit uh, passive on his social media, but apparently he's eating and training and he has plans to win the Mr. Olympia this year. Uh, let's hear Brandon out. Babe, some people are asking if you're retiring, like literally in the questions. Why, why, why would they ask me that? I have no idea. I think people start in trouble making up rumors. Why hey, would I be doing it? Yeah, why, where are y'all getting it? We've had so many people reach out and ask us if she Brandon really is if Brandon yeah. is going to be doing the Olympia this year. But we have no idea why people think he's not doing the Olympia or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm doing Olympia, people. Uh, I don't know why. Not doing <laughs> Somebody Olympia. said Brandon looks... Yeah, we heard he's 205. <laughs> 205 in his bicep. Well, I, got, I, got 265. I, got, I got good news. I got good news. I am doing Olympia. For anybody that's questioning, I am doing Olympia. I will be there. God willing, as long as we have an Olympia, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. People make stuff up just to get ratings, whatever. Come get the info from the source. So there you go, guys. Brandon Curry is going to be doing the Mr. Olympia. If you guys were wondering, now you know. Uh, Brandon won the Arnold Classic this year. And if the history repeats itself, the last time he won the Mr. Olympia, actually the only time, he also won the Arnold Classic the same year. And so maybe this year he wins the Mr. Olympia again. I don't know how much politics really played a role in this whole thing. Uh, maybe the, the people in the Mr. Olympia want Big Ramy to be the winner because, you know, he's the biggest guy uh, up there on the stage and because he has so many fans in the Middle East, stuff like that. And he is kind of um, like a big name, you know, to represent the Mr. Olympia. It all makes sense, but he didn't show up at the Pittsburgh. So maybe they, they took that, you know, badly and maybe they, that's why they won't let him win. And it's going to be between like Hardy, Brandon, maybe Nick Walker, maybe Hunter Labrada, maybe somebody else. I don't know. But it looks like Brandon has a little bit better chances this year. So, of course, he's going to be doing it. He's going to try to reclaim his title. However, I do think William Bonac was better at this Arnold Classic. I understand that he had gyno, maybe he was marked down because of that, but I, st I still don't see it. I still think probably it was political. Again, unfortunately, I do think uh, Bonac deserved this win. If you remember, the judges said that the reason was uh, the gyno and also that Brandon looked better in person than on the videos and the photos, which I doubt was the truth. I don't think Brandon was at his best. Apparently, it was still good enough for him to win the Arnold. Will it be enough to win the Mr. Olympia? Maybe he's gonna come in sharper, better, I don't know. We'll see though, there is still time until the Mr. Olympia. We know one thing and that is Brandon is gonna be competing. Next up, we have Orlando Pro. I didn't make a separate video about this because I couldn't find any proper footage. It's all Instagram stories and I, I assembled a couple of videos so based on these, it looks like Hassan is gonna win another show. He won Puerto Rico and now he brought pretty much the same conditioning like in that show. 
in a runner-up position, I think we're going to have the guy on the right, Andrea Presti. He also brought great conditioning, and he has like a wide, big frame, but his legs are definitely nowhere near Hassan's, and like he doesn't have that kind of fullness and roundness, so I think Hassan is going to beat him because of that. But look at his back, and look at the hardness, the conditioning. Andrea Presti is a good bodybuilder. Look at Hassan's glutes now when he's turning around. He forgot to flex them, and you can see that they're actually not in great condition. But they weren't at Puerto Rico. Everything else is pretty conditioned, but not the glutes. I don't know, it's probably the quality of the video, but it looks like Hassan is a little bit less conditioned than the last show. Still conditioned enough to win this one. But I think he's fuller. I think he's not as flat as he was in uh, Puerto Rico. I think he looks bigger fuller rounder and i think it works in his favor here you can see his glutes especially they're not that uh, dialed in uh, next to hassan you're gonna see phil Klahar. next to andrea Presti, you have max charles who also might be the runner-up he actually might even beat andrea Presti. we'll see as i said in my last video phil Klahar, if he is 100 percent on he might win but I don't think that's the case. All the way left, you see Tony Burton, definitely not in that top four. He's out of top four. He's going to be probably fifth or sixth. But as far as the winner, I think Hassan Mustafa deserved this uh, pretty clearly. As far as the second, I'm not sure. I'm thinking probably Max Charles or Andrea Presti. It actually seems like a pretty good show, but unfortunately, if you want to properly see these bodybuilders, you're going to have to be there. You're going to have to go there to buy the tickets and to actually witness it firsthand. If you try to watch a bodybuilding show online, it's most likely not gonna work out for some reason. They can't get any proper cameras to cover these shows. And we can't really see what's going on here. I mean, bodybuilding is that kind of sport that requires perfect footage. It is not like football where you can listen to radio. You need to see, you need to see clearly. That's not the case here, but I think it's pretty obvious that Hassan is winning. We also have another physique update of Keon Pearson, who is getting more shredded by the day. He's at five weeks out of his show, and, uh, you know, that's a long time. So he's definitely going to be shredded this time around. I mean, if everything goes well, if everything keeps running the way it is, he has enough, more than enough time to be really shredded. Last time we saw him on stage, I believe it was Mr. Olympia, 212, and... You know, he didn't look that conditioned, so probably he's haunted by that a little. He wants to redeem for that. You know, they say you're only as good as your last show, and uh, in his last show he was not very conditioned. I'm guessing it was probably because he was trying to play the size game, as he's not exactly in the weight cap, he's not 212 on the stage, so he tried to be as heavy as possible because the other guys are really massive. It didn't work out that well, so this time around he's gonna try to be as conditioned as possible. Now what do I see here also is that he kind of has gotten a little bit flat. Which is normal, which is fine for most competitors. You have also like Brandon Curry who is always, always freaking round. He shows us his updates and he says he's flat, he's car depleted, but he always looks huge and round. And uh, as you can see, I mean, Keon is looking great. You know, after that Mr. Olympia, he said he wants to do the classic. He wants to stay natural year-round and do the classic. Apparently, he couldn't pull that off. I understand him. It's, it's, it's very addictive, the gear is. Uh, so he probably obviously started using again. He decided to do the bodybuilding, 212 bodybuilding. And he grew. In his off-season, he looked massive, right? He looked like he could do the open, not just 212. Just look at his roundness, look at the traps, look at the shoulders, look at the arms, and look at the legs. Like, it looked like he grew so much muscle. I thought he was gonna do the open. But I guess it was mainly water, a little bit of fat. It wasn't a lot of fat, he was pretty lean. That's why I thought he grew so much. But it looks like he retained a lot of water. Maybe he was using a lot of insulin and, like, a lot of sugar. So he got bloated and he looked big. He looked, like, really, really big. But now when he lost... Uh, all that fullness, I mean, all that water and the glycogen, you see the truth, you see that it's not really possible to grow that much actual contractual tissue in one off-season. So he definitely made progress, I'm sure we're gonna see that on stage, but not that much, he didn't grow that much. But he looks great, and I'm really excited to see him back on stage in five weeks. So guys, whatever you think about anything in this video, tell me in the comment section down below. Make sure, because it helps the algorithm. So thank you guys for that in advance. Uh, thank you for watching all the videos, and uh, if you guys wanna watch more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much once again, all the best, and bye-bye.